So have you ever considered CO2 as your onboard air option for your off-road vehicle? Well today we're going to take a very close up look at this power tank CO2 system. We're going to talk about some of the pros and cons of CO2 and then we're going to take it out on the trail and test it out. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and today I'm really excited to share with you this new Power Tank CO2 system that I recently received. You know, if you've been following me on Instagram or Facebook, you'll know that I recently upgraded the Jeep to 37 inch tires, which is really exciting, and we've got a lot to talk about at those tires that we will do in a different video. But one thing that it's meant to me initially is filling up those big old tires with that tiny little compressor that I've had for a while just wasn't gonna cut it anymore, so I needed to come up with a different solution. So I called the guys over at Power Tank. We talked on the phone for a while and they came up with a great system that I think is gonna be perfect. I'm really excited to share this with you. This is great quality stuff. But first, let me kind of mention that I got an opportunity to speak with the owner of Power Tank. Such a good fellow, man. And he's an off-road enthusiast, which I really, really appreciate. He started the company over 20 years ago and he started in his garage just trying to find a way to inflate tires when he's coming off the trail that's quick and easy and over the 20 years that he's had the company man he's created a great product and he's just continued to evolve it to get better and better and that's why we've got some really quality products here to talk about so first let's talk about these two 10 gallon co2 tanks that i have right here and you're probably asking yourselves brad why did you get two 10 gallon tanks well i wanted to get one 15 gallon tank but after talking to those guys and telling them kind of what my needs were. You know, I want to do some storage in the back of the Jeep. I want to put a refrigerator back there. So space is a little bit of a commodity. So having one 10 gallon tank versus a large 15 gallon tank is going to help me save space. But by having a backup tank, it's going to allow me to not have to make a bunch of runs to get it filled up every few months. Plus, plus, I can install one of these in the XJ later on, which that's pretty cool. So that's why I have two tanks. Now I chose their red colored tanks because I really like the color, but there's a few other options over on their websites that you can check out, which is really cool. Now there's some specifics here about the tank that I wanna talk about. First, there's a bunch of stamps up here on the top of the tank, and there's I think there's two that are really important to mention. One, it's the DOT stamp. These are DOT approved, which means you can put these in your vehicle and it's legal here in the US. The other one, is this date over here, let me find it here, 10A17. So the 10 is the month it was stamped, and the 17 is the year it was stamped, and then sometimes you'll see an A, a C, or an arrow in the center, but really the important thing is the number before it and after it. Now, that is the date that these were hydro tested. So tanks have to get hydro tested every five years, and that's the stamp you're gonna wanna look for. I mean, you get a rehydro tested, they'll re-stamp it. The cool thing is, Power Tank says, you know what, if you ever have a problem rehydro testing these, they will replace the tank for free, which is awesome. And then at the base of the tank, there's a place to write down the empty weight of the tank. And the reason that is important is because it's not the gauges that tell you how much CO2 is left, it's actually the weight of the bottle. So what you do is you weigh the CO2 tank when it's completely empty when you first get it, you write that weight down, and then you decide whether or not you wanna put the handle and the regulator on there or just weigh it without that stuff, go get it filled, weigh it again, and that will give you your full weight. And that way, after you've used it several times on the trail, you bring it home, you throw it on the scale, you'd be like, oh yeah, now I know how much I've got left. You know, I've used half of it so I know how much I've got left to go, which is a really nice little touch to having that decal down there. And at the base of the tank here, we've got Power Tank's protective boot, which is a really big necessity because you know, when you're running around with a tank, setting it on the ground all the time, it's actually the base of the tank that gets you know banged up on the rocks, on the concrete, wherever you're using that. So having that little protection down there is gonna make this bottle last a long time. Also, there's these flat edges on the boot, which is really nice because when you lay the tank down, that prevents the tank from just rolling over because those stop it. Very nice details like that that I am really impressed with. And then attached to the top of the tank, we've got some really cool stuff, right? We've got our HP 250 high flow regulator, which puts out 45 CFM, which is quite a bit. Now, you can inflate your tires, obviously, but you can also run power tools with these, and you can reseat a bead of a tire if you need to. That's really nice. And they've guaranteed that this thing will not clog, it will not freeze. It's very nicely built. It's got some great chucks here, good quality stuff. The gauges on there are very easy to read. 
And then at the top of the tank, they have their aluminum power grip, which is really nice. You know, it protects that regulator uh, to keep you from banging it, especially if you're carrying it around. Plus, it's a nice way to just carry the tank if you need to. It's got some holes at the top where you can put tools or you can put the hose through there if you need to. Uh, very easy to take on and off. There's just two Allen bolts on there, and so that's easy to just pull apart and swap it onto the other tank if I need to. Uh, just a really nice design. It's very sturdy. I really am very happy with that. They've also included this little regulator protector, which is really nice. You know, if you're running with your top off, you don't want that to get all dirty and clogged up with dust and mud and whatever else you might be running around out there. So having a cover on there is really nice. And then they included some mounting hardware for the Jeep JK specific, but this actually can be applied to many different things and they have other solutions for whatever rig you've got. So the clamp here is all aluminum, a really nice design. It's got nice rubber in here, so the no metal to metal contact. And I can tell you that I actually already used this off-road. It was very solid. There's two clamps that attach to the back of this and then those just go right over your roll bar. It's a really nice design. You can put these on uh, over the cloth on your roll bar on your Jeep or metal to metal. Either way, uh, I found it over the cloth was just fine. It did not budge while I was on the trail. And then I've got two types of hoses here to show you. First is their 30 foot coiled hose, which is really nice. Now the important thing to know about CO2 is you need to use a high pressure hose and that's what these are. And I will tell you that these aren't just the ones you buy from your local hardware store. These are really nice. You know, they've got nice little handles on here, but the ends of these hoses have swivels on them. So you're not gonna get all the kinks you would normally with the hose. It's really a very nice design. It's actually on both of them, the coil hose and on the straight hose. Now some people prefer the straight hose over the coil. I haven't decided yet. I actually use the coil one first and I'm gonna try this one next and I'll see which one I like best and we'll talk about that later on in a future video because you're gonna see me using this on the trail all the time. But really nice hoses guys and they have a two year warranty which is very cool. And then at the end of the hose here I've attached their female super coupler. And I will say, and these are really well made couplers. Now you can see here that you just insert this and that locks in. So you've got this little key, this little rim here that you just locks into place. You just pull that back and forth. That's, that's really nice. It's very solid and that's not budging. There's no play in that, which I really like. But then the other cool thing about this coupler is it's actually got like a built in on off switch. So you push this forward, it's on, pull it back off. Really a nice setup. Very good quality, very well thought out. Now let's talk about their tire inflator, which is a really well built tire inflator. It's 2.5 inch gauge on here. It's got a nice ergonomical grip. It's got a little relief valve so you can relieve the pressure if you need to. Plus it's silicone filled. You know, a lot of gauges are filled with glycerin, which when it gets cold, it can make the gauge really hard to get to the proper reading. You know, I was using this already. I'm very impressed with it. You know, I've gone through several tire gauges either because they broke or the readings were off. Having something like this is going to be really nice. Uh, very happy with this. And on both ends, they're on a swivel. Once again, we're doing swivels here, right? Which means you're not gonna get any kinking in the hose. It makes it really easy to use. And for me, having bead locks, this 90 degree fitting really makes things really easy. So look, I'm really happy with this thing. I think this is gonna last me a long time. All right, now that I've shown you everything, let's go get this installed on the Jeep. And while we're doing that, we'll talk a little bit about pros and cons of CO2. All right, look, there's really nothing to install in this bottle mount to the roll bar. It's pretty straightforward with the brackets here. As I'm getting these set up though, let's talk about some of the pros and cons of CO2 because there's a few things that I think we need to identify. So the biggest one for me is empty bottle anxiety, right? I don't want to be out on the trail and run out of CO2. But the cool thing is if you go over to Power Tank's website, they actually have a chart where you can cross match your bottle size with your tire size and it'll give you an estimate of how many times you can inflate your tires, which is that's good, nice to have and nice to know. Uh, I'll, as I begin to do this more often, I'll just kind of figure it out on my own. Um, the other thing is the inconvenience of having to fill up CO2, right? So you gotta go find a place to fill it up. Thankfully I'm in San Diego and there's quite a few options here. You know, the best one has been a beverage store and they seem to be the cheapest. But there, you can go to a welding shop, you can go to an air gas shop. Uh, you can also go to a fire extinguisher service place and they will do it for you. So you've got a few different options to look at to go get your CO2 inflated. Now, the other thing is cost, right? So that's a big deal. However, 
there are some really big pros to running CO2. And I think uh, the best one is speed, right? We are gonna inflate our tires super fast because when I was out on the trail the other day and I pulled the tank out, man, I pulled it out, I inflated everything, put everything away, and I was done before people were done breaking out stuff. So it's really, really convenient. Also, it's portable, right? So if I need to go air up somebody, I don't have to drive my vehicle there. If let's say my buddy popped the bead and he's a few vehicles up, I can just grab the CO2 tank, I can run up there and we can set his bead, which is really nice. The other thing is uh, you can use it for air tools. I mean, that's really cool. You can run air tools off it because it's got a lot of pressure, pretty consistent pressure the whole time. Also, this is a key one I think that people kind of don't ever pay attention to and that is CO2 is quiet, right? You pop on an air compressor, it's noisy, it makes a lot of noise. And if you're maybe at a campsite in the morning or somewhere where you don't want to be making a bunch of noise, you're not going to have to worry about that with CO2. The other thing is high pressure, right? So for me in a Jeep, it's not a big deal. I mean, I'm only running my tires at 30 PSI, but for folks like RVers, you know, they're running really high pressures in their tires, or maybe you got high pressure in your trailer, CO2 is gonna get there no problem, where sometimes a compressor is gonna work to reach some of those high pressures. I think it's a great option. I think there's a lot of pros, and for me, I think this is the best choice. All right, let me quit rambling. Let me throw this thing on there. Let's go light up some tires, and let's see how fast we can inflate them. All right, I've got the XJ out here, which has a 32 inch tire. And because I don't have bead locks on here, I usually only take these down to 15 PSI. So I've already dropped the pressure to 15. We're gonna take it to 30 and see how fast it goes. Ready, go. Twenty-five seconds, and I actually overshot it a little bit, about 31 PSI. It's pretty fast. All right, I've got my 37 inch tire here and I've already deflated it to 10 PSI. And the goal here is to inflate it to 30 PSI as fast as I can. Now, I will point out that I just did this test a minute ago and I didn't realize something. You know, I have two valves here on my bead locks, but I didn't know until I was filming that one of these is actually smaller than the other one. And I was pumping air in through the smaller one, which took 47 seconds. So now we're gonna use the larger one. I think it's gonna be a little bit faster. And I will point out that power tank sells what's called a monster valve, which allows you to slam the CO2 in there. All right, let's see how fast we can do this. Ready, set, go. Time, 41 seconds. That's pretty fast. All right, here's the plan. I've got all four tires aired down to 10 PSI. I put all the gear away, so we're simulating like I'm just coming off the trail and I'm gonna air everything up and we'll see how fast I can do it. I'm shooting for five minutes, so ready, set, go. Almost. Five minutes, 21 seconds. That's not bad, but that was pretty fast. Well, I hope that I've shared with you some new knowledge about CO2 systems. You know, I think this is something that I'm gonna use for a long time to come. You know, I like the fact that it's fast, it's portable, it's quiet, and I can run air tools off there. So I think this is a great system and it's such good quality, guys. I will leave in the description below a link over to Power Tank. Go check out their stuff, guys. It's a great company and they're making a great product. And look, if you're using CO2, I'd like to hear from you. Tell me what it is you love so much about your CO2 setup. And if you're visiting the channel for the first time, hit that subscribe button. Love to have you as a member of the Trail Recon team. Thanks for watching.